Thank you very much to the Commission for the invitation to speak to you today. Um, I'm speaking to you only on behalf of Imperial College London. Um, it may well be that the views I express are representative of the research universities in the UK. I'm no longer speaking on behalf of the UK government. They may or may not share my view. Um, the bottom line, I think, in terms of uh, our perspective at Imperial is there is an opportunity in what's being done with the ERA to make a step change in what we're achieving and what we're doing uh, in Europe. Now, this is a slide with which you're all very familiar. It simply plots by country how much is spent um, on gross expenditure on R&D and on the other axis how many researchers there are. So it's an expression of what is the financial capital and the human capital in different places. Now, let me say categorically there is a huge amount to celebrate in Europe. I mean, we shouldn't stand here being overtly self-denigrating. It's not a very good platform on which to progress. There's a huge amount to celebrate, a great deal that's been achieved over the years. However, there is a strong sense that um, we are not achieving at the level of the investment of human capital and finance that we're putting in. There's a strong sense that the scope for more investment, but also that some of the larger units of investment, USA, Japan, China, where there's greater coherence in the deployment of human capital and finance, may be pulling away faster from us in Europe. And I think that is the opportunity that the ERA has. But let me just remind you, if you look at the total human capital and total financial resource in the EU27, it is by no means trivial, which is actually why we're doing very well in many places. The challenge is to get a greater coherence in the deployment of that capital and uh, human capital and financial capital. And the ERA does have an opportunity to make a step change in that. It will not reach utopia, but it has the opportunity to make a step change. Let me just look at now from a rather narrow UK perspective. In the UK and places like Imperial, sources of research funding from the EU have become progressively a very significant part of our research budgets and our research strategy. At Imperial, the amount of EU money has doubled over the last five years, and you can see there's four universities, as a, usually the, the four uh, biggest, most research-intensive universities in the UK, something like 6 to 8 per cent of their uh, gross research budgets are now um, EU-derived. So it's extremely important, and we are you know, fully-fledged, paid-up, enthusiastic uh, um, members of this. Now, the human resource dimension, you know, everybody has alluded to that that's spoken so far, but it's worth repeating again. We live and we compete for attracting global talent and retaining a share of the best. So attracting and retaining talent worldwide to a research career in Europe is absolutely crucial to developing a truly effective research area. And let me just give you a sense uh, where one institution, i.e. Imperial College, is. At Imperial at the present day, more than half of all the research staff at Imperial College come from outside the UK. We view that as an extraordinarily healthy thing, but actually if you want to maintain and develop excellent standards, you're going to have to compete on the world stage. At the same time, around 40% of our academic staff come from outside the UK. About half of all our students are from outside the UK. I mean, we have to compete and offer opportunities that are globally competitive. Now, of the EU programmes, again, you know, a perspective probably from the UK but specifically from Imperial, the prospects um, provided and heralded by Horizon 2020 are hugely welcomed. That's 
some really visionary and important programs there. Our own engagement in Framework 7 programs has been uh, large and we've been enthusiastic supporters. The European Research Council is viewed as a huge success. I think everywhere in the UK and, as we've heard from previous speakers, uh, internationally. That is a tremendous programme pursuing excellence. EU funding has become a key part of our strategy in engaging with industry, i.e. developing economic benefits and impact. The EIT kicks, which are very new, and we participate uh, fully in a climate kick and uh, partially in the ICT kick, these, I think, have a very important future. They've, had, they've been very complex and quite troubling to get started, as many new programmes are. But they are now running well, bringing together universities across the uh, European research area and many businesses. So this sort of construct is challenging, but it's visionary, innovative, and has a chance of achieving a great deal. Now, everybody has some hopes and expectations for what the future may hold. I mean, our expectation, like others, is that we do achieve and do need to achieve a greater coordination between European programmes and national funding agencies. Um, the previous speaker uh, was appealing for this to be done without legislation. I mean, my own view is that uh, legislation has very little place here. It is all about uh, the pursuit of excellence and uh, competing for it. Consultation on strategic areas um, and the prioritisation for joint programmes is important. In our own case, uh, we do this extensively through um, uh, LIRU workshops and, uh, and uh, JPIs. There is, I think, a wide appeal for greater transparency in what we do, simplification of mechanisms for application and simplifications for review and reporting. I won't spend too long on that. It's a common bleat, but I think that does need to improve considerably. So how are we going to meet our competitive challenges? I mean, within the world's top universities, Europe still remains underrepresented amongst the top 50 universities in the world and is going to have to strengthen some of those if it's going to compete for the best talent and offer the best careers. Funding and career opportunities in Europe have changed enormously. I mean, since I was a relatively young person and came back from the United States to Europe, there's been a huge change in opportunities, uh, but it's still got a long way to go. But it, the direction of travel has been very positive. PhD training in Europe, overall, in our own institution, and I think more widely, does need to become more innovative. And we need to move it into a world-leading position. This is where we have, I think, a great opportunity going forward to share and develop best practice. The key issue for me is that in Europe, how do we make the whole greater than the sum of the parts? There's a big investment in human capital. There's a lot of money at the moment the whole is not greater than the sum of the parts. To end up, in conclusion then, EU, EU funding support is increasingly important for the principal research universities in the UK. It's a major part of our strategic development. The national priorities in the UK, particularly in meeting societal challenges, grand challenges, and uh, impact in terms of uh, economic uh, growth actually align very well with the um, challenges and uh, aims of the ERA, and we don't see any misalignment there. And there's broad support in the UK for the achievement of this. Much of the structure that is needed to make this happen is actually already there at the member state level. It's the coordination and achieving coherence in this that is the challenge, and the ERA has the opportunity, we believe, to make a step change in achieving that. Thanks very much. Thank you, Professor Onius. I think that.
Excellence through competition is, of course, uh, one of the main goals and means to achieve the European research area, as you said. The next speaker will be uh, Professor Paul Boyle, uh, who is the, the new chair of the new organization called Science Europe. You are representing a very powerful uh, collection of national research funding and performing organizations, and you certainly are one of the in most important stakeholders in, in the development of, uh, of ERA. And, um, I really would like to emphasize the crucial contribution of, of all these actors to the completion of Also, um, reacting, uh, I hope that you react to the ideas presented by the Commission of a Strengthened Partnership, and uh, you have a good position to do so because you had a successful, very high-level conference in Slovenia quite recently, also a few ministers participating. So please, the floor is yours.